and welcome to Beyond the Boundary. This is the 2015 season preview for the Adelaide Crows. My name's Nick Geis and I'm joined by Josh Rickard and Vinay Lakshman as always. Now boys, they've got a new coach in Phil Walsh and a new captain in Tex Walker. What do we think about these changes in the off-season? Well, I'm really looking forward to talking about the Crows because uh, we seen in our little sneak peek video that uh, our teams were looking forward to. Yep. This is mine, so I want to get straight into it. Phil Walsh is a terrific appointment in my opinion. Uh, spent a lot of time being an assistant coach around the traps. Yep. Um, and I can see a similar similar uh, feel to what Ken Hinckley had at Port The Crosstown Rivals there. And that is a huge comparison. That's they even look a bit similar, don't they? <laughs> well, they're from the same place. Balding old men, yes. <laughs> but that is a great compliment to make a new coach. Um, if he can do what Ken Hinckley has done across the town at Port Adelaide, that will be huge. Well, yeah, you have a look at it. At the point in time... Yep. Adelaide's probably got a better list than what Ken Hinckley had yep. when he took he over. He began the rebuild, correct, yeah. Exactly right. So I think Phil Walsh can come in and have an immediate impact, and he already has by naming Tex Walker as captain. And what about Tex Walker? What do we see? Um, he's coming back from he came back from an ACL last year, obviously. Yep. Um, he's just looking to take this competition by storm, and now he's the captain of this club. I think it's a smart appointment. Oh, you know you go, you go. I know Tex Walker is a man that you uh, are fond of. So <laughs> I'm very fond of the big Texan. Yep. But I don't see him as a captain. I was don't just saying. I don't see him as a captain. I was going to say Did that. You? Sorry. Just, just these off-field Having shenanigans. Yep. Yeah. I don't see him as a captain. What does he do he's, on field? He's, he's just a bit of a larrikin, so to speak. Oh. Yeah. Um, he's very lighthearted. I like the approach. But as the face of the football club, I'm not so sure. He's very, very vocal on his Twitter account. Doesn't hold back mm. from anything that it, um, that comes into his mind. Oh, I can yeah. see what you're saying now. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Not very diplomatic is what you're trying off to say. Off the field, yeah. on but the I, on the field, I can see him being a terrific leader. Yep. Off the field, maybe not. What are your thoughts on that? I agree with Josh. I think he's a good leader in the sense that he's a good football leader. On the field, he will take those big marks that'll inspire you. He'll you know dig deep and kick the goal in the last quarter that'll revive his team. Yep. He's a good player and he'd be willing to put his body on the line for his club, but. He, he's just he doesn't come across as the most um, as Josh said I just don't think he's got it all there to be captain right now I think he's just one of those guys that you look to for a leader on the field Yeah. but outside of that I don't know if I'd feel comfortable approaching Tex Walker if I had an issue whereas I would feel comfortable approaching Pendlebury or Selwood or Ablett yeah. yeah well you've both said that it, it sort of seems like a strange choice as captain I'll tell you, there's two obvious choices that that club is captain. That's Patrick Dangerfield and, and Rory Batman. Sloan. Batman. I'll tell you why Tex Walker is the captain of this football club. Why? It's because he signed a contract. Ooh. If if one of these two guys had signed that contract, they would be the captain. There's I like no it. way they would have passed up on one of I, these two leaders of this club. I like that theory. It's, it's, that's a fair, fair theory. theory. And it has to be talked about. Usually Nick's crackpot theories end with Geelong, but now they've started to branch <laughs> but, out to Well, don't you feel like But it, can, it can't be skipped over that these two guys are going to be a huge distraction this season for the Adelaide Football Club. Oh, without a doubt. And, I mean... Danger, I, I personally don't think, and Vinay doesn't think, no. that Danger will leave. Well, this is the great divide here. I reckon he's gone. No. I, I no. honestly don't think he will. Right. These guys think it's just because I'm a Geelong supporter, I'm hoping I'll get no. into the case. Paddy Dangerfield, from all <laughs> indications, I, I am a very from all avid indications. follower of what goes on in the footy right. club. From all indications, he loves Adelaide. Yeah. He has done, said, or indicated nothing to show that he's not happy. Apart from the fact that he hasn't he, signed a contract. He loves... Uh, well, that doesn't mean anything. There have been a number of players in the past that haven't signed yeah. contracts, but they've yeah. been perfectly happy at their club. And Dangerfield is one of those. Some players just prefer leaving it till the last minute. Some players just think, well, we'll get it over and done with at the end of this year. I don't want to start the year off you know, talking about contracts and whatnot. Yeah. I want to just do my pre-season. I think he's staying, Josh. Well, just, just quickly before we move on. Yeah. The way Dangerfield spoke that night on the footy show uh, that... After Brenton Sanderson got sacked, mm. I just got that feeling that he was a bit annoyed at the club. He was bit, he was a bit annoyed at the club, yeah. but he spoke with a lot of passion about he the club. Did. Um, yeah. So that that's my sole reason why I can't see him leaving because he was adamant yeah. that um, the the players were backing Brenton Sanderson. We do have to move on, but I want to have my say on this. Yeah, um, Dangerfield knew this was coming. He like this contract has been put off. There's no way he didn't expect this distraction to happen. Yeah. Um, if a player knew this distraction was going to happen and he was sure he was staying at the club, he wouldn't have let it happen. This is something you don't want at a football club um, in a season that there's so many other things they want to, that are going on. You, if you know this is going to happen, you just avoid it. You just sign the contract. Yeah. If he hasn't done that, there's got to be speculation there always yeah, will be. Absolutely. Yep. Um, we've got to move on. They've filled all the holes and added some great depth in trade and draft. I think they've done really well. Um, key position defenders, they've brought in Lever, Ramsey and Chaney. Ruck depth, Loudon, O'Brien and Deer. 
Outside speed and skills, Wigan Wilson. These are all the huge holes in the side, and they filled them. Excellent. Very good yeah. drafting. Very good. Jake Lever was meant to be a top 10 pick. Yep. Yep. Slipped out to Adelaide. They'd be thrilled with him. He was down as a top three at one stage last year. Yep. Uh, injury held him back. ACL? Oh, yeah. Um, no, absolutely. It, was it was a knee, I think. They, they've, they've got a bargain there in Jake Lever. Yep. They've got Nathan Van Berlo back fit. He might have lost the captaincy, but having him back fit, they're saying perhaps he won't be having that tagging role. He'll be more of just a, an out-and-out out midfielder this year. Um, mm. Very exciting. That'll burn him losing the captaincy because yep. he didn't have a he didn't have a chance to prove himself last year that he's still able to keep that role. Yep. Um, off the field, obviously he did, but on the field he didn't. Might be want to make a statement, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I can see him having a big year. Yep. Um, and certainly if he can shake that tagging role like Phil Walsh has said, um, and be another midfielder, he's more than a handy midfielder. Yep. I'll tell you that much. Won't get the tag, that's for sure. <laughs> Now, Jake Lever, we mentioned, um, do we expect him to be filling the role of Ben Rutten straight away in that side? No, no, no. no, no, no. I think uh, the man will be Kyle Hardigan. Yep. Uh, he spent a lot of time in the Sandful, um, obviously playing with the Adelaide uh, Sandful side last year yep. and whoever he was affiliated with the year before. But um, he's a big body defender, um, si- similar mould to actually Ben Rutten. So. Well, they've, yep. got, they've got two Coles yep. that can replace Ben Rutten, Hardigan and Cheney. Yep. Cheney's, Cheney's come across from Hawthorne, didn't get many games. I'm not personally a big fan of Cole Cheney, but I think he's made he, that aware. Yes, uh, if you've watched last year. <laughs> yep. I think he has the potential to be a good footballer because he's playing AFL footy. Yep. And he will enjoy being in a back line where he isn't the small fish. Well, Phil Walsh says he's in their best 18. Um, and I think he'll really relish that role, as you say, when he's not the small fish. He won't be playing above his weight and size anymore. We saw him got destroyed by Hawkins and many other <laughs> opponents of that stature last year. It was ridiculous. He was playing at Hawthorne. Yeah. But at Adelaide, he won't be that player. Correct. Oh, absolutely. And uh, playing for Box Hill for majority of last year, yep. he was a very, very good footballer. Oh, yeah. He's, the, he's the footballer that's caught in the middle of maybe not good enough for AFL, yep. but too good for VFL. Ah, yes. He's one of, yeah, yeah, one of those players. Yeah, one of those guys. So he, he's got a really, really Like Lewis Jetta. Yeah. Oh, Leroy Jetta. Leroy, Leroy Jetta, yeah. Jetta. He's gone now, so yeah. um, but he, he's going to make that step up this year. Phil Walsh has installed that faith in him and says he's going to play regularly. Yep. He's got to take that opportunity. Another player we're expecting to take the opportunity this year is Charlie Cameron. Down at Adelaide, they reckon he's the next big thing. Could form a formidable partnership with Eddie Betts. Absolutely. Well, he's taken the number 23 at the Adelaide Crows, which uh, needs no recognition yep. uh, from us on the importance of... Of that number at the Adelaide Coast, obviously Andrew McLeod, yep. or that number, Jared, Jared Petrenko, Petrenko. What a star um, he was. To fill. <laughs> Matt, well, not so much Petrenko, but more Bungie McLeod. Yep. Um, but he, he showed signs last year that he's going to be a very good footballer, a very good small forward. Um, the other ones we want to talk about before we get into what we expect are the Crouch Brothers. Oh, my favourites. Big things from them. I love year. these two, yep. Bartimus and Mattimus. I like to call them. I really like what I've seen from Matt, um, but Brad's the one for me. We're going to do a little uh, video on him later in the year. He's yep. going to go nice but um, Brad Crouch is the one for me that I'm really, really excited to see. They've got a lot of really good youngsters who are on the verge. You know, Rory Laird, Mitch Grigg was one that had a great first season then didn't get many games last year. Yep. Yep. Uh, and Luke Brown is a handy little defender who yep. will also play in the 22. Now, boys, what are we expecting from Adelaide in 2015? Um, they were just outside the eight in 2014. And their fans are expecting a top eight finish. Oh, this look, they should have made the eight in 2014. Yeah, I should have. Blunt and brutally honest, they should have. Yeah, yeah. Losses to teams like Melbourne. Melbourne probably, at home, yeah. yeah. Um, West Coast in that last few. At Amy, oh, yeah. Adelaide Oval. Adelaide Oval. Those were games lost, that, lost to Richmond as well. Yeah, those are games that they must have won and they should have made finals. So yeah. they'll be fuming, Josh. For me, there's always one side that jumps up. And it'll be Adelaide this year. I think yep. they can really push top four. Mm. Well, you, you see this list. There's so many great youngsters. Brad, Ka- Brad Crouch, we mentioned, um, that are all. They've got another preseason under their belt, another year of development, and they're just losing those games last year, those vital games. This year, it's hard to see with improvement across the board that they won't then win those important games this year. I agree. Improvement. Um, having said all that, the pass mark that we have agreed on is to make the eight. Yeah. The yep. fans are expecting that. The club will be expecting that. We're as a panel expecting them to make the eight. Yep. Um, and Good luck, pros. Personally, I think they will. I yep. think they will too. Yep. 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 That concludes our match pre- our season preview. Sorry for the Adelaide Crows. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.